Good evening. That was part of Shostakovich's first cello concerto. It's the main work in tonight's promenade concert with soloist Heinrich Schiff and the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra conducted by Asa Pekka Salonen. The concerto was written just over 30 years ago and, unusually for a modern work, gained immediate popularity. Like many pieces written by Shostakovich in the late 50s and 60s, the concerto is part autobiographical and part protest at the political situation in Russia at the time. Tonight's soloist is one of the world's outstanding cellists, the Austrian Heinrich Schiff. I met him at Snape Maltings just after his recent arrival in Britain. Heinrich, if you were introducing this work to a first-time listener, are there any points of particular interest you would draw attention to? Um. Yeah, in different ways. Uh, maybe I start with a very easy one. This concerto is written for a great, great cellist, for Ostropovich. And I think that the purpose of the composer, besides all his ideas in composition, or besides uh, spiritual ideas in that very particular piece, is that it should be a cello concerto, with all the needs, uh, expressive and virtuoso cello uh, likes to have when he performs. So the col collaboration between Rostropovich and Shostakovich, like many other composers who, who did write for him, was very successful in terms of uh, the cellist wants to use his instrument as he likes to, uh, to appear. There's quite a lot of aggression in the piece. The first four notes of the whole work are not expressive at all. It's probably uh, a, a, another link between the composer's character and, uh, Ros and Rostropovich's nature, who yes. can be a very aggressive cellist. And he can, as we all now are asked to do when we play that piece, uh, nearly harm the cello and, and don't act very gentle and, and uh, careful with our old uh, instrument. So uh, this nature of... Rostropovich and certainly the nature of, of, of Shostakovich who has this very, very bitter aggressivity and this very, very powerful uh, fighting attitude against whatever. This, this is the first movement altogether. The first movement doesn't have any uh, so-called melancholical or sentimental or vocal or uh, song-like no, theme. No, it's all very rhythmic. It has all this, this from... <laughs> lower so that we can hear the notes because they are yes. also important. The tempo is... And you could easily think that this first movement, which is only four, four or five, five minutes, something like that, quite short, uh, as it starts with that energetic uh, theme or motif, the whole piece consists on that same energy. There are different other uh, musical ideas and themes, but emotionally it starts with that strength and with that rhythm, and this strength is not laid down. It, it doesn't relax at all throughout the whole first movement, and when it finishes with similar rhythm and very loud and very supported by a timpanist, 
then you think this stream of energy just had started, not only four or five minutes, but maybe half a minute ago. Yes. And you just felt this permanent energetic pulse and it's over. So once we're through that very taut, harrowing movement, we come to a moment of calm in the second slow movement? Um, second movement seems to start in a total different world, uh, very vocal, very singing, very melancholical, not with a source of energy, but probably with a source of depression and melancholy, not as uh, gray and black and hopeless as we know other works of his, especially later works like the second cello concerto in, in specific as I'm a cellist. But let's say viola sonata is a typical piece of oh, that yes. kind. And as the movement comes to an end, it's continuous, I believe. How will the listener know that the mighty cadenza is about to start? The cadenza starts with the theme of the second movement, or with one of the themes of the second movement, which you might recognize it appears in the cello during the slow movement. And this motif will begin the cadenza. So that is probably a point where you remember. But there's another spot before the cadenza which is very significant and very special. It is a duet, if you could call it a duet between Celeste and Cello. And then as the cadenza develops, I, I'm no cellist, but I suspect it becomes quite difficult technically. Oh yes, uh, it develops in... Is that an understatement? In yeah, I mean again, coming back to statement number one, that there was a cellist sitting uh, together with the composer when certain Mr. decisions were made. Greatest, uh, so, cellist, I mean, yeah. he certainly would not have any difficulties if the composer wanted it desperately, but as the composer was also willing to, to do what a cellist says, you really find every difficult place in, in kind of, uh, okay, I want that kind of music, but how do I place it as a composer in the way that a cellist will not kill me? Oh, and right, so it lies well for... Uh, the, the pretty performance. well. Yeah. I mean, in the most difficult spots, uh, you, you know that probably also Rostropovich had to practice when he played it first time. <laughs> It's uh, interesting, this wonderful cadenza builds up in a virtuosic way. Does it lead straight into the last movement then? Absolutely straight, with a lot of runs which you try not to miss. And if you don't miss, the conductor might follow you and then you land in, this, in the last movement. The last movement uh, starts obviously with a different theme, but only, only at the surface because this theme... <laughs> as you can notice, it's... It's, it's again, it's now the, if you could say, it's a Shostakovich motif, or it is... Yes, the D. The shift of a third. Yes. Uh, but it consists only of that shift. Repetitive and aggressive again, so there is a link in the atmosphere and in the use of rhythm with the first movement. So. The whole time you have these links, but very evident link, or musically you call it, in German at least, bridge form, you say that in yes. English about? That you get the original motif or theme of the first movement. <laughs> that comes in the last movement in different ways. It comes played, it, it will come played by the orchestra on certain moments where you don't expect it, but it just appears like that, like a, like out a message. Of the, out of the blue. And, and am I right in thinking it brings the whole piece to an end? That sure, it does in that moment. It's, it, it kind of 
calls for the end. And here is Heinrich Schiff with Asa Pekka Salonen to perform Shostakovich's first cello concerto. There are four movements, of which the second, third, and fourth are continuous. The third is a massive virtuoso display for solo cello.